Join spiritual feminist and empowerment coach Joni Advent Maher for Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow. Listen in for intimate conversations about money, transformation, and feminine sovereignty. And now, your host, Joni Advent Maher. Welcome to Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow. I'm your host, Joni Advent Maher, spiritual midwife and transformational guide. And today, I'm so excited to have nutritionist and health coach Madeline McKinnon as my guest. Welcome, Madeline. Thanks so much for having me on your show, Joni. This is so, I'm so excited to um, talk about all these juicy topics. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Let me tell folks a little bit more about you. So, Madeline is the founder of Natural Hormone Healing, and she specializes in women's health and hormone balance. She's an expert in adrenal fatigue, menstrual health, fertility, and menopause. And she teaches women how to balance their hormones through traditional food nutrition, elixir crafting, and food as medicine culinary arts. Wow, that's, that's some powerful work, Madeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely my passion. Uh, just because, yeah, I, I think so many women in the world are struggling with hormone imbalances right mm -hmm. now. And we have to, my passion is to really empower women with those tools that they need to understand their bodies and take what, do what they need to feel balanced and feel like themselves and their bodies again. Mm. So I, I really feel like this is another element of what I call sacred feminine flow, which is liter literally that physical level of flow or fluidity, whether it's through the hormones or the process of, um, you know, becoming a, a, a menstruating woman or stopping becoming a menstruating woman. So those are, those are all aspects that you uh, work with. So can you tell us, can you tell us first how you found this passion and then a little bit more about what that means to you, that sacred feminine flow on the physical level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have been studying nutrition and, and working in the field ever since I was around, about 20. So it's been a while for me being in this field. And I worked at, I started my career just working at different health food stores mm. and I had so, so many women come to me. Um, and usually when you work at those health food stores, especially in the supplement health section, you have everyone <laughs> just telling you everything that's going on with their health and asking for advice on what they should be taking. It was really interesting. I was a bit surprised <laughs> when I first started working like that. But I noticed that there was a lot of women coming in who were trying, doing a lot of, of things with their health. They were eating really healthy, trying to take supplements and herbs and maybe doing some yoga and exercise. But I was seeing, and, and they were frustrated because they weren't getting the amount of output for the input that they were putting into their health. So they were experiencing still str struggling to lose weight, uh, hot flashes if they were in menopause or PMS symptoms. It was just like so many women were coming to me. And I, I was a little perplexed at that time because I didn't know how to treat that yet when I, when I started out. But I knew that I wanted to learn more about it because I was like, there must be an answer. And then the, the whole, it catalyzed, it was a catalyst for me even more when I started to have symptoms of a hormone imbalance about mm. four years ago, where I was, I was suffering from just, it felt like an overnight thing where I got anxiety and heart palpitations. My heart was beating fast and I was having acid reflux, feeling overwhelmed, feeling so stressed and feeling very much out of my body. And I was at, at the end of my work days, I, I just felt drained. Hmm. And my whole, yeah, my realization around that, and, and that really got me like, okay, how am I going to 
treat, figure this out. So I, I, I took that time for myself. I had to kind of break away from my regular schedule, my regular work schedule. I went and traveled for a little bit. And, and I realized that what was causing these hormone issues was there's so there's multiple causes for women. But for me, it was because of the stress that I was putting on myself and these expectations that I had of myself at that time. And also the way that I was being in my body, I didn't feel I was getting really disconnected from my body. I felt like I was living in my head more mm. than in my body. Mm. And that's how I see like sacred feminine flow on, on a physical level is it's about living more in your body. Because when you live in your body, when you're breathing deeply, when you're mm. feeling more pleasure just being in your body, then you can feel that connection. And I think that we're wired physically to be in our body and, mm -hmm. and to be in our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest state. And that's what women thrive off of. Like men, men um, can handle the stress states more, but they still need to be in the parasympathetic state too. But as women, just our hormones are so much more sensitive. And when I learned more how to get into that parasympathetic state. That's how my body started to heal. And that's how I, one of the reasons, uh, nutrition and herbs and elixirs, they all helped. But the core basics of it was d tapping into my own body and, and feeling that connection again. Mm. And how did you do that? What what did you do? What steps or what methods? <laughs> mm -hmm. The methods that I used was definitely taking and un uncovering what those stresses were. Mm -hmm. So finding out what those, I call them the energy leaks. So what things are draining my energy and putting my stress on my body. And mm -hmm. for me, it was really having to address those expectations that I had for myself and let, let some of those expectations go because they weren't, they were putting so much stress on me about, okay, who I am, where is my career going? It was just this thing that was going on. And when I w was able to release those, that's important. And then um, to be in my body, it was about learning to breathe deeply, like because the breath is so mm. powerful. Yes. And getting out into nature, because I noticed something whenever I was out in nature, I just felt like that because I got back into that embodied state. And that I felt normal. I felt like this is how human beings are supposed to feel. Because just being in nature just instantly got me into that state. Mm. Uh, yeah. And, and then, you know, when I'm living, you know, I'm in Canada, so it gets pretty cold here. So sometimes we go outside a lot. Sometimes we don't, if we're going skiing and stuff, we'll be outside, but not too much. <laughs> but um, yeah, I still, it, when I'm living, when I'm at home, um, I will we'll even use like essential oils or meditations uh, because this, I love essential oils because they'll drop me into that ner parasympathetic nervous system if it's an oil that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I like, yeah, exercising feels good to me. Anything that feels like pleasurable, I find, is what gets me into that embodied state. Mm, yes, yes, I totally mm -hmm. agree with you. I have, I have found that. And actually, I didn't realize that that's... Um, where we were going to end up, but a, a number mm -hmm. of my recent episodes have been related to just that very thing of ultimately the parasympathetic nervous system, um, both mm -hmm. last month's interview and some, uh, I did something on coming out of freeze and just that idea um, of coming back to that, what is it, the rest and digest digest aspect mm -hmm. of our nervous system right mm -hmm. and that we as women are more sensitive or or maybe i would even say like finely tuned yeah um, finely tuned to that yeah and i think what might be a value too for your listeners would be to learn about how that how the nervous system, how the stress even impacts our hormones too. Oh, yes. Can you tell us mm -hmm. about that? Yeah, because this is what really, when I started getting into the research on this, this is when I was like, okay, because a lot of people, when they want to balance their hormones, they'll focus on the herbs and they, a the typical thing, if, if someone's doing the natural route is they'll go to a naturopath and they'll get um, herbs and supplements and they'll, that can be a lot of money and sometimes 
sometimes you'll get 10 different things to take. Um, but I, I don't think that the herbs will work if you don't get back into that parasympathetic state um, because of the huge impact that it has on your hormones. Hmm. Uh, so what happens is that when you get, when you're stressed, what's happening is you're flipping into your sympathetic nervous system. And another way of saying that is your fight or flight. And this state of your nervous system is what we are human beings, like it's a natural state. And typically when we were living more in the tribal, more times before we had our lifestyles now, this would be something that you'd be feeling when your life was at risk somehow, like you had to run away from the saber tooth tiger, or you had to, you were potentially worried about famine, because that was a real thing mm. of actually worrying mm. that you might not have food. Mm. So it's, it's this ancient thing that we're now we're trying to deal with in the modern world. But um, our bodies can handle it for short periods of time. I think that we can handle it appropriately for maybe two weeks or so. Um, but if it happens over, over a long term, our bodies aren't designed to function as well with it. Uh, so what happens, like right away what happens is that instead of having blood in your torso to help you digest your food then your blood will go into your hands and your legs for running because your body thinks it's at risk so lots of people will feel right away problems with their digestion hmm. and um, so they might get loose bowels or constipation um, and they'll feel this adrenaline so if someone is, is can have more anxiety and that's something like for me if I have too much stress I'll start to feel anxiety even though I don't on a regular basis if I monitor my stress. Mm -hmm. So you might feel anxiety. And then as we go into hormones, is our body, because of this ancient response, we don't prioritize fertility and reproduction anymore if you are in the menstruating years. So you're instantly that will cause different hormones to be affected. So mm -hmm. your thyroid goes down when your cortisol, which is that stress hormone goes up, thyroid goes down just because of that. It doesn't, it's not even in uh, the, it's sometimes not other reasons. And then progesterone, which is an important hormone for fertility, but also for regulating the menstrual cycle and just helping you feel good and preventing PMS um, is important. So progesterone goes down and then your adrenal hormones can dysregulate, which will ca can cause low energy and a host of other issues along the road. Uh, and uh, another thing too that's important is that when we go into this state, it can be hard for women to lose body fat because your body thinks that there could be a potential famine, so it will like pack the fat on. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Your body's doing what it's supposed to do. It's a healthy thing. It would mean that you're going to survive, but when the other person that, that isn't putting that fat on might not in a case of famine. So, and also the most easy form of fat is the belly fat that most women just do not like, right? But the belly fat is apparently the easiest fat to access in <laughs> forms of famine so <laughs> I like to tell women it's not like something wrong with you it's just Aww. you're doing the right thing you know so it's it has but over this is like the short-term things but long-term when we go through the stress like disease risk for mm -hmm. all different types of diseases increase there's you know, there's just lots of research on the long-term influences of stress um, and just we won't be able to get the results for what we're doing with exercise and nutrition as well if we're in that state. Mm. So it, it sounds to me like your approach is really like how can we partner with our body mm -hmm. and, and be um, kind of in tune in those ways and, and that when we are partnered with our body that it naturally allows us to be more receptive, more mm -hmm, receptive, mm -hmm. as you said, to the various kinds of input that we're doing. Um, and, yeah. and, and that seems really significant to me because when we are in, when that stress, when the stress hormones are activated, I know that we are in a more kind of active state of mind. Mm -hmm. And as you said, with those stress hormones kind of kicking in. So it's so fascinating to me that, you know, at this physical level, that, that it is, you know, like another manifestation of 
the sacred feminine flow, as I, I keep going mm -hmm. back to. And I, I know one of the things that you work with is, um, is it eating for various points in your cycle? Yes. Yeah. I have a program called Eating for Your Cycle. And that's just what you said earlier about, yeah, I think it's all about awareness. So first we have to educate um, women about their symptoms. So back to, just a little bit back to um, the stress response is that what helps me now is I can know when I'm going into that state because I'm aware of that and what it feels like, I'm able to take action to get myself back to prevent those spirals of, and mm -hmm. I think that a lot of women like haven't learned about how to tell when they're in certain hormonal states and then they it just spirals and it gets worse and worse and worse but just having that awareness has been really powerful and the same goes for the menstrual cycle and feminine flow and just because um, a woman's menstrual cycle her hormones are shifting there's actually four distinctive hormone shifts that go through on, through her menstrual cycle because just to make the ovulation happen and these hormone shifts have such a profound impact on our body and our brain and our nerve our neuro neurochemistry that we i think it's so valuable for women to be able to learn about this um so what happens is that um your hormones are gonna it's gonna impact your like sex drive is one thing it might be a bit obvious that our hormones impact our sex drive but it also impacts um, yeah, how social we feel, um, how like communi how good we are at communication even actually if, during the ovulatory phase of a woman's cycle that's been studied and our like communication and cognitive skills are better. So you can actually utilize those talents. I call them your, your shifting talents. So you're, you can, in that stage of your cycle, you can do more public speaking, get out in the world. You're going to be perceived to be just more attractive. So I recommend that women utilize that energy that you have. And then during that, the menstruation, your menstrual phase, you might feel more internal and your brain, the brain has been studied too. And that's a time where the left and the right hemisphere of the brain is the most connected. And it's a natural time where you'll be feel more connected to your intuition. Um, so it's just amazing how these hormones impact our brain chemistry too. Uh, so I think that is, can be really empowering for women to understand that we don't have to be the same every time, every mm -hmm. single day of our cycle yet. I feel that we're expected to be the same <laughs> and the yes. menstrual cycle is really hidden. It's a very like a taboo subject to talk about. Mm. Uh, but, you know, it's just so important. And when you start to look at the research about how it is impacting us, I think it's really, yeah, so empowering and such a great way to tap into that feminine flow of like learning to work with these fluctuations of our hormones and when we can understand, you know, what's normal for us through our cycle, then we're able to have it work with us instead of against us. Because I know a lot of women feel like their menstrual cycle is like a drain on them. And it's definitely can be a drain if their hormones are imbalanced and they're having symptoms like heavy periods and PMS symptoms. Uh, but what my goal is, is like, let's use nutrition. Let's, let's use uh, these other practices of stress management to balance your cycle. So it can be this empowering experience instead. Mm. So can you speak to just the whole phase of like perimenopause and, and, and menopause and, and how that might shift that cycle, you know, that flow and that cycle and, and what's going on or what women can maybe do to support themselves if they find themselves in a really intense phase of perimenopause mm -hmm. or what have you. Yeah, definitely. That the, the phases of perimenopause into menopause can get a little bumpy for women. Because, <laughs> yes. Just because whenever we're going through these transitionary periods, so like going into a young woman having her period for the first time or postpartum or pregnancy, it's it can be a little bumpy. Um, but there, there are ways to go through it with more grace and, and less symptoms. And that's what I'll work on a lot with 
clients um, th going through menopause. Um, so one thing that can be really helpful when it comes to nutrition is you can eat different foods to support the hormone fluctuations through menopause. Uh, so number one is before your period stops in perimenopause, that's what we call perimenopause, your progesterone levels are start to lower and go down. And what you can do in that phase is you can start to support your progesterone through certain nutrients. Uh, some of my favorite ones are sweet potatoes. They have a lot of natural, they do have a natural form of plant progesterone in it. Hmm. So you can eat food that has that to support it. And then we also use, a, we also utilize this vitamin called vitamin B6 and it builds progesterone. So you can eat foods like sunflower seeds. Uh, or are, are really high in vitamin B6, bananas, um, but sunflower seeds are the best. Those are my favorite. And eating certain proteins like turkey and chicken are really good, just making sure you're getting the protein in your meals. Um, and there's even a, a herb that some women will use called Vitex, and it actually is one of those herbs that has been shown through research to increase the progesterone. So you can get that in a tincture or if you want to take a really gentle approach, you can even get an essential oil where you're inhaling it, hmm. and that can can be helpful. So that's some ways. Um, of course, yeah, there's a there's a lot of different things you can do, but those are some nutritional things that help, and and some herbs. And then as we go to menopause, then you can start um, supporting your body with food that has phytoestrogens in it, because as you hit menopause, your progesterone just really tanks it totally drops and that's why <laughs> the women women will get those um hot flashes because that's just your body your blood vessels are used to having the estrogen and it's kind of reacting to that direct drop in in hot uh, in the estrogens so you can have certain foods like ground flax is really effective pomegranate grapefruit those are all Pomegranate and grapefruit are foods that have phytoestrogens, but not a lot of people know about it. And hmm. they're very gentle. They're really lovely to have. Um, there's some teas that you can have, like um, red clover tea would be a great one to drink that throughout the process. Uh, and then, yeah, there's different foods. Vitamin E is a really good nutrient. Um, so anything that you can get vitamin E from almonds is, uh, is a great source of vitamin E, like salmon, some those good fatty fish, olive oil. So that would be a very holistic way of, of really learning about how you can use food and nutrition. So it's a great to learn about how to, I, I love like, I'm just so passionate about how you can use nutrition because we use nutrients to build our hormones. So that's such a, a great tool for women. Right. And it sounds like you prefer the food is medicine approach over taking just taking vitamin the vitamins or taking the pill form or the just mm -hmm. herbal form is that true yeah yeah i recommend that you start with food mm -hmm. and then but there's some women that sometimes food just isn't enough so they might need to do a bioidentical hormone later on um if the food isn't working, but I recommend you always start with food and then do some herbs after the food or some supplements. And then if those doesn't work, those don't work, then you could go to do a natural, like full bioidentical hormone. Um, and it would have to be estradiol because that is the estrogen that is safe. Um, a lot of women are worried about the influence of the hormones in cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, Taking them, but if you take estradiol, that's actually protective against breast cancer um, as well. And where where does someone get that, or how does someone get estradiol? Is it a specific form so or you brand? Can or? Get that from a, a, a doctor. So either okay. a naturopathic doctor or a medical doctor would be able to. Um, I, I think in the U.S. It might even, I know that Canada, they're pretty strict, but some people can even buy it on their own wow. in the U.S., but I still recommend always going through a practitioner just because you don't, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you're on the right dose, and then they'll be able to also test your hormones to see, so definitely great. Make sure that you have someone that you feel you can trust and, and that they're going to give you the natural sources of the hormones. Excellent. And let me just ask you, regarding menopause, you talked about using the, um, I believe, 
phytoestrogen is that what you were mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is that like forever you know once you reach menopause then it stops but then you know as you're aging is it still beneficial to be consuming those things or do things kind of find a new normal do, do you know about they will that? find they will that's a great question they do find a new normal um after a while and you don't have to take them to manage your symptoms eventually you won't have hot flashes and you might your sleep may go back to normal um but there's also a whole um thing about your estrogen, it's important as you get older because you're that estrogen that as I was mentioning earlier, the estradiol that the ovaries produce, it's a very protective estrogen. That's the one that protects from breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately, there's some women that after, well, their estrogen, they still produce estrogen. It's a different type, estriol. Um, but this type is if our body doesn't properly break it down through our liver, then it can actually sometimes increase breast cancer risk for a small percentage of women that have those genetics. But um, even if it, it might increase breast cancer, but even if it's not increasing that risk, it can also give them hot flashes still and sleep issues. So then in that point after menopause, I still recommend that women have certain foods to help them break down those estrogens because the beautiful thing is we use food for that. Mm -hmm. But if you have that food, then you won't be able to break it down. So still after menopause, I recommend that you still do lots of um, beets um, full foods that are high in folate, like leafy greens and avocados, mm, um, okay. like eggs are really good cause they have choline. Um, and yeah, the B12. So you're still just focusing on the nutrition. Uh, and then the brassica families would be kind of my top choice of, of having, um, lots like making sure that you're having a few servings a week, like up to four or more servings of like kale or broccoli, mm -hmm. Um, or sour raw fermented sauerkraut is one of my favorites and that will help you break down those estrogens properly from your liver and then that will automatically give you that protection um, of to make sure that that estrogen that you're producing isn't going to influence any like increased cancer risks and different things so that's one thing I, I wish doctors would tell people about that but they haven't been interpreting the research to tell people but I hope in the future that 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 can be something that everyone knows about because it's so important and it's something you can find out through science and everything nowadays mm, that's wonderful information I'm, I'm so glad you're sharing that with us and so you work with women both one-on-one -on -one, and then do you have some some online programs that you do tell, tell us mm -hmm. yeah so I have a I work with one-on-one -on -one coaching for menopause um, adrenal fatigue menstrual health and fertility mm -hmm. and then I have um, an online program called eating for your cycle that is for men's it's about eating for the four phases of the menstrual cycle and that's for menstruating women and, and women who are struggling with fertility and we're also going to have a program launching in the new year, which is when this podcast is going to be out on adrenal fatigue, which mm -hmm. I was saying when you, that's what I was experiencing as I was mentioning my symptoms. Uh, it's when you're, that happens from long-term stress. So we have that program is coming out too. Um, and I think we were even going to give um, your listeners a free gift. I have a, a, a adrenal healing meal plan. Um, if anyone wants to, or we're giving that for out for free. Um, yes. If you want to get a taste of what the adrenal nutrition and just a little bit more about my approach for adrenal fatigue. So this is for women that are really struggling with low energy and brain fog and sleep issues. And it's great for women. Of, women experience this in all ages and stages of life. Yes, yes, yes. And I will the link will be um, in the information section. So the link for that as well as for your website, which is uh, naturalhormonehealing.com. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I did want to ask you just a couple of more personal questions. And mm -hmm. one that I like to ask my guest is about a personal experience of trusting your sacred feminine flow so whatever that means for you do you have mm -hmm. do you have a story guess, you know 
it's really about trusting my intuition and always knowing that my intuition is going to be correct because I always, even sometimes feelings, certain people, I might have a feeling about them. And then I, they always, sometimes I really need to trust that. I think that's really important. And I just know that when I started, like in the last couple of months, I've been really diving deeper into a meditation practice and being able to connect with myself um, through the meditation, I feel more connected with my intuition and just that, that helps me make better decisions in my business and in my life and like in so many aspects. Mm, yes, I love that. Just connecting with your inner wisdom and intuition. It, it, it is probably our most valuable resource, one of our most valuable resources. So why don't we transition uh, okay. So I would also love to ask you just from who you are and where you are today in terms of all your wisdom you've gathered, what would you like to tell your younger self if you could? I think that life is full of lessons and the lessons that you think you're going to learn are probably not going to be, yeah, they're going to be different. Then. <laughs> You're going to have different forms of lessons. Because I know that for me, my lesson was actually really needing to um, learn the the wisdom of hard work, <laughs> you know, because wow. that was, I was maybe starting out more like in my, you know, I felt in my feminine flow, like a lot, like <laughs> when, I, when I was younger too. And I, I it's been kind of something I, I've always felt but then I had to like bring in that other side and that was a lesson in itself. So usually those lessons are going to be things that don't come naturally to you that you need to learn to master. And they're such a gift and they're something that's going to help you like grow your, your character and, and really be mm -hmm. more of like a fully em like embodied human. <laughs> yes. Yes. It sounds like you, you needed to cultivate just that healthy, sacred, masculine yeah. <laughs> aspect in order to partner with that powerful feminine flow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and learning to bring it together is what I'm working on now. Yes. Yes. And that is ultimately the goal because that's how we function optimally is to have the healthy feminine flow and that uh, ability to have the structure and the be able to take action in our lives and initiate things that comes from that masculine energy. So I, mm. I totally get you on that. Um, and I, I actually I do have a question. If you could, from your place of wisdom today, talk to your younger self who either was just starting to menstruate or just before menstruating. Um, and going through some of those fluctuations, what might you say to just to her about that? Yeah, just knowing that it's a sacred time when you menstruate and it's nothing to feel ashamed about because I felt some lots of shame at that time. Um, and I think it was a collective societal thing because it wasn't for my parents or anything but it was just like feeling like this is normal and this is just part of being a woman and it's a sacred time to rest and rejuvenate your body. Wonderful. I do think that, um, as you said, there is so much stigma that we face around that and misinformation and to really, as we can start to partner and appreciate our physical body, you know, we can we can relish the gifts that come from that cyclic nature that we have as women and that um, like that, that connection to the, to the earth in that way. I, I mean, it seems to me like that's a component of the gift of our nature. Yes, definitely. All right. Well, I can't believe it, but we have reached the end of our time for today. Is there anything else that, you want to leave our listeners with before we wrap it up yeah just that it's it's so important as women that we learn to understand our body deeply um, there's a term called body literacy and you can where you can under, learn to understand your cycle or understand the menopause process and I just really encourage women that awareness is the first step to 
um, balancing hormones, if that's what you're wanting, or connecting to your feminine flow. So I really encourage women to learn about their body and the symptoms and their hormones and and see that impact that just by awareness, how that can have on your life and your body. Wonderful. I absolutely agree. It's it's empowering to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that you uh, write a blog regularly, and so you offer lots of great information, and people can sign up for that on your website as well if yeah. they're interested. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, we have naturalhormonehealing.com has all of, uh, we have lots of blogs and articles. And I also offer trainings and interviews with other experts on my private Facebook group, the Vibrant Health and Hormone Balance Sisterhood. So you can search that and find that on Facebook. And do you have the link for that on your website as well? Um, I will. Yeah, I'll give you that link too. um, And I'll put that up on my website somewhere where it's easy to see. Okay, just in case because it's it's a long, it's a long title. It's a long one. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I want to I really want to thank you, Madeline, for being with us today and and sharing so generously all your wisdom. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me on. Hmm, My pleasure. My pleasure. And I want to thank you, our dear listener, for being with us and choosing to spend your time in this way. And I want to remind you, as always, until next time, to trust what your heart knows. Thanks for listening to Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow with Joni Advent Maher. If you like what you heard, the best compliment you can give us is to share our podcast with a friend and subscribe, rate, and review our podcast at iTunes.